Let us go downstairs now, down to the touchline, our reporter there, Bill Arthur. As you say, Eddie, around 8,000 supporters in the water sheddings, and certainly half of them have come from Wigan in the hope that they're going to see their side presented with the championship trophy. One man on the Wigan side is having to miss out tonight is uh, hooker Martin Dermott, who's got a, a bit of a knee injury and presumably a bit sad to be missing this one. Yeah, you know, it's just, just twice I've missed out on a, you know, a league final, a game as it is. But tonight, you know, we've got Martin all in. Uh, is it, you know, he's, he's been playing well all, all season. But uh, it's going to be one hell of a game. You know, it's boiling to one game, and this is it. You know, it's 80 minutes. It's 80 minutes our bust. We've just got to go out there, play uh, mistake-free rugby, and just get on with the game. And hopefully, you know, the defence is going to be sound and uh, finish the, the, the attack off. Is it plenty of experience in the Wigan side, but have there been nerves in the Wigan camp? Well, not nerves as such. Uh, a bit of apprehension coming to Oldham is, uh, is a game in itself. But to come here at the last game of the season and with uh, two league points hanging over our head, you know, ready there for, for you know for the grabbing, is uh, it's a feat in itself. What sort of game are you anticipating briefly, Martin? A very close, uh, solid forward type game. But hopefully, you know, get the ball to Inger or to Martin. It should uh, you know should get the two points. But it's the Oldham side who are first out onto the field and Bob Lindner is the captain coach of Oldham. And one of the guys he was talking to then was Andy Goodway, former Wigan player, who won just about every honour in the game with Wigan. But Lindner, the Australian, would love to turn Wigan over this evening and deny them their fifth title in a row. Could well be Bob Lindner's last match too. A lot of talk about him moving on at the end of this season. We shall see. The crowd just waiting now for the emergence of the champions. And the champions elect, they have to win. Here tonight, Dean Bell, Fano Bonica, Gary Connolly, Martin of Fire, Sean Edwards and company know the task that lies ahead. They have that winning face on, don't they? And Dean Bell, who has won five championship medals since joining Wigan in 1986, has been here, seen it and done it all before. The Oldham side, Gibson, Heslop, Irwin, Abram, Jones, Lydiard and Crompton, another ex-Wiganer, Sherrod, Clark, McDermott, Lindner, the captain coach, Goodway, and Kuwaiti. And on the bench, it's Charlie McAllister and Shane Tupaya, and the coach, as you see, Bob Lindner. Brano Botica set to head the goal charts for the second time in three years. Tremendous record he has got. 155 goals this season, including one-point drop goals. Let's take a look at the Wigan side. Connolly, Tuigamara, who's keeping out Robinson, Bell, Mather, Ofaya, Botica and Edwards. That's first choice. And this is first choice, apart from the fact that Hall plays hooker in place of the injured Martin Dermott. Skerritt and Platt alongside him, and Betts and company elsewhere. Panapa and Cowie on the bench. Match referee is David Atkin. 29 years old from Hull and you may remember if you're a regular big league viewer David Atkin was in charge of the Wigan match at Sheffield recently when Wigan lost so they talk about cup finals this is the Stones bit of championship cup final Wigan know they must win to take out the trophy for the fifth year in a row but that's the sort of challenge that faces them from Barry McDermott Good run by the prop forward and also by his other prop, Ian Skerritt. That is the start they wanted. Really get involved with that. Nice little kick over the top. Wally Gibson thundered into Botica off the ball and David Atkins spot on and picked him out and gave Wigan the penalty. You can see he made no attempt to go for the football. Just threw his body into Botica. Took him well out of the position. Good refereeing there. Wigan heading up the watershedding slope in this first half. They lost in the Challenge Cup here way back in 1987 
their last defeat in that competition. There's Skerritt with his first drive, and what a reception committee for Kelvin Skerritt. The left arm heavily bandaged, and the touch judge on, and Skerritt looks at the four challengers, smiles and has a word. Well, it was a pretty hard tackle, but there was a little bit of stamping going on in all that there, and I think you'll find that it's the centre, Darren Abraham, on the blind side there. It's a penalty to Wigan for that, and Botica wants a shot at goal. Botica, the boot, that's the angle that he has. He's 10 metres in from the touchline on that far side. Two early penalties conceded by Oldham. If they really do want to match Wigan, they have got to be disciplined. A bad mistake there. The forwards had done the hard work really did pulverise into Kelvin Skerritt. Certainly made Skerritt realise that it's going to be nothing easy tonight. And then a silly wayward kick. A little bit of a stamping, actually. And you can't afford to give this radar boot the chance. So Botica then 149 penalties and conversions this season. Important kick this. And he's missed it. But the Oldham player caught it and then staggered out and went dead in goal. So it's a dropout from underneath the Oldham sticks. With length on it, Clark got a fingertip. It bounces into the arms of Tuiga Mala. That's the advantage of the big man, Inga the winger. You can see there, he dragged four players to him. So does Skerritt. Bobblin and number 11, Kelvin Skerritt in the Wigan prop forward position. They've had some rare old battles too, Great Britain and Australia. There's the knock on though. Wigan tried to force the pace. Connolly couldn't wheel that ball in. Good play by Nigel Heslop. Comes flying in off the wing there and put Connolly under a lot of pressure took his eyes off the football for a split second that was enough for him to lose it but great play by Heslop coming right in from the wing Crompton the man who feeds the scrum he gets it to Lydiard who then brings the centre Irwin into it a dummy half is Wally Gibson the full back roughhouse tackling from the two props Platt and Skerritt this is the Drop forward, Sherratt, and Oldham in Oldham in uh, Wigan territory. Now then, Andy Goodway won just about every honour in the game during his Wigan career, and the use of an elbow. Dean Bell going straight down there, using the right elbow, and very fortunate in my book. Well, really, that right was in front of the referee. Malicious action in my book then. It was Lillard's penalty, and here goes Sherratt. Clark, and he finds Bob Lindner. Clark wants to get on with it quickly. Gibson, that's a good ball, and here is Irwin. Irwin, good tackle on him by Barry John Mather. Irwin takes the play the ball to himself trying to run through Sean Edwards but dragging Oldham to within a couple of meters of the line it's a rough tough start this here's Crompton Crompton gets away from Hall finds Gibson left footed from Gibson into the corner of fire sweeping up can he get out of trouble Whoa! a big hit on him by John Clark was it ever Clark the hooker the shoulder oh didn't they pile on top of him then? Martin Crompton helped with a good job that Martin of Fire is in top form. He read the kick well, came to the rescue, but what a start. It's what Oldham needed. Still no points on the board, and I know that Peter Fox and the Bradford Northern players are watching this anxiously across the Pennines. 
Bradford coach last night ready to concede the title to Wigan despite the fact that his side had gone top of the table with the 52-10 victory over Leeds at Headingley. I wonder what he's thinking now after this start by Oldham. Can they keep it up? That's the question. Well, Oldham are finding the gaps there. That's for sure. This Wigan defence not straight. Lydiard and here's Kuiti and he gets the ball away to Irwin. Irwin, good run from him. Tackle, came in. It was Dennis Betts, and it's Linda now running at Betts again. Harry John Mather and Betts working hard to keep him out. Last tackle here for Oldham. They're moving the ball quickly along the line. Lydiard, lovely ball. He gets it away, and so close. Oldham so close to the first score, and it was Crompton. Crompton there, but what a great tackle from the second row. Andrew Farrell saved the day. The strength of Farrell just brought Crompton back. But great play by Lydiard. Oh, that's a high one. That's payback time from Goodway on Bell. No love lost, the former Wigan player. He looks at the referee, David Atkin, and says, what for? I'll tell you what for. Bell's head went back. It was Goodway, of course, who was caught by Dean Bell with the elbow early. And Goodway just laughing with referee David Atkin. But I think the young referee from Hull has told him that he better just cut that out. And he also probably said to him, OK, that's one each. Cut it out, both of you now. Get on with the rugby league. An encouraging start this, though, by Oldham against the champions for the past four seasons. Andy Platt struggling to his feet. Martin Hall is the dummy half. Here's Andrew Farrell. Of course, as well as the championship, Wigan tonight, the players are all playing for places at Wembley next Saturday. There's no turning on and off for Wigan. They have been pursuing this championship all season, and this is just about, I would venture to suggest, John Dorohy's Wembley lineup. Must be pretty close to it. But apart from that, let's not forget the champions will be on their way to Brisbane and a big paycheck for all the players there. It's Edwards' kick over the top. Heslock comes in off the wing to collect it. And then Bell is the man with a bit of help from Martin Hall who wheels Nigel Heslop in. Gibson fell as he picked up that uh, ball at the play, the ball. I think he took over the prone figure of Dean Bell. Clark was grounded. That was Sean Irwin, and here now is Mike Kuiti. And that's surely a penalty. Larry John Mather was hanging on to the ankles of Kuiti as he tried to get to his feet, but the referee, David Atkin, which waved play on. Here's Crompton, former Wigan scrum half, drops the ball down the slope, and it runs away from Connolly, who has to collect it on his own line. Crompton's led the chase. Abrams there too, but uh, it's the second rower, Andy Goodway, who gets there first. Super kick and chase. Oldham really are playing well. They're playing the ball extremely quickly. They're catching this Wigan defence out. A couple of times they've caught Wigan going backwards. Oldham enjoying the better of the early possession as Platt runs the ball up for Wigan. Oldham the side promoted from Division 2 last season. They were relegated in 91. They've just held on to the big league this season by the skin of their teeth. But credit Bob Lindner with a lot of good planning for that. Gibson was underneath Edwards' kick downfield. Betts is the man who tackles him to bring him down. And Betts, I think, using the foot. Says he was trying to get out of the way, but David Atkin took the opposite view. So well, you can see he just tried to get the boot on top. Nothing really malicious, just got caught up in that. Pull back Wally Gibson there picked up an injury when he was trying to knock down Sean Edwards's kick. They collided. He came off worse. Five penalties opening ten minutes. We knew it would be rough and tough. Here's the prop forward McDermott. Does well, gets the ball away. Oh, that's not the best pass and Goodway went for it one-handed. The silly play by the hooker John Clark. Well, it wasn't a bad pass. The experienced Goodway should have got that and gone together. 
trying to pull the ball in with one hand. Just about three feet in front of uh, Goodway, that was all. Tried to wheel it in one-handed, couldn't do so, so it's Wiggins, Scrum, Bottica to Connolly. Gary Connolly, his third Wembley beckons, he's lost his last two. Four St Helens against Wigan, he is Bell. Off to the Auckland Warriors at the end of the season. Dean Bell anxious to end on a high, as is Andy Platt. He takes Wigan to the halfway line. Good defence from the old impact. They really are getting into it, the forwards. Connolly just delayed the pass and delayed too long. Lindner had him. Barry John Mather is the dummy half. Tall figure, six foot six inches. Martin Hall, the dummy half to Edwards. Here's the kick. It's a high one that hangs in the breeze. Gibson's underneath it. He must have heard Clark coming towards him, but Clark was called in by the referee, David Atkin, and told he was going to be penalised for offside if he went in too quickly. Little doubt that Clark was in front of the kicker. Good referee there, but it was a good take from Wally Gibson. 12 minutes gone. Rick Roaring start this by Oldham. David Jones is in possession for them. Former Bala International. It is as though Oldham don't have the type of player that can really spring about a big shock tonight. Lidiard, we've seen, has got plenty of speed. Martin Crompton. Wally Gibson, talented player. Connolly picks up Crompton's kick downfield. Erwin, the man who brings him down, trying his last two for Sean Erwin, former Great Britain international. Now here's Martin a fire. Scored a sensational try in midweek. Gets that ball away well to Twigamala. Twigamala, it takes something to bring him down, but Oldham succeed. Huge black clouds overhead now. It's been sunny most of the afternoon. And the rain starting to fall. Wigan need the two points to become champions. Lindner clashes with Skerritt. And I think the referee has given the penalty Oldham's way for the use of the elbow by Kelvin Skerritt. Short pass from Platt, you can see there. Skerritt put the elbow fair and square into the Australian's face. Just a wry smile to his teammates. But Skerritt there using the elbow. Illegal. Good deep penalty from Glenn Lydiard in his second spell here, the Australian. Now Crompton. And he brings Jones into it, former Wakefield Trinity winger as well as the former Bala Youth International. John Clark clapping his hands, the Oldham hooker wants to get on with it. Gibson to Crompton, this is McDermott. McDermott saw Lindner, it wasn't the best pass, but it bounced kindly for Heslop, who skips inside a fire, and it was a tackle from Connolly and Edwards that kept Nigel Heslop out. So close Oldham again here. Ball spinning quickly across the line. It's Sean Irwin dancing his way. Desperate defence from Wigan. It's back with McDermott. McDermott shaping to kick. Driving for the line again himself. Ball comes out. Play on, says the referee. And again, is it? No, this time I think he said it was a knock-on. It looked to me as though that might have come off the foot. Super scrambling defence there, it was Betts late tackle there, Crompton just a little bit of a knock on, just enough, but Wigan were well and truly stretched. Martin Afire went right in and Nigel Heslop showed his skill, stepping in and out, nearly got to the line. Rain falling at water sheddings. Mather is the man in possession for Wigan. Bottica, the dummy half. He finds his captain, Dean Bell. Dean Bell, the man who scored the only try in the eight point to 10 defeat in the cup tie here in 1987. It remains Wigan's last defeat on the road to Wembley all those years ago. Clark takes over from Martin Hall. This is super defence from Oldham. They're moving it quickly, and that's a drop ball. Yes, Clark lost that. Well, we saw yesterday Bradford making unforced errors. Nerves it was, I'm sure. And it's the same here tonight. So much pressure on this game. 
Steve, oh, there's so much pressure on Wigan. A lot of people complaining, Peter Fox and company, particularly at Bradford, that the matches should have been played together. But this pressure on Wigan tonight is enormous. And it's showing. Big problem for Oldham, though, is that uh, they've got the defence right well and they're making the break. But I'm afraid they're not putting points on the board. Wigan's scrambling defence is just saving the day. Here's Andy Goodway. That ball came free. He tried to keep the ball alive. There was no suggestion at all that that ball was stolen. He tried to spin it away. It was being spun to the ground from Dean Bell. It was a good tackle. Big question, of course, Steve-O, is can Oldham keep this up? Can they keep this pace and pressure up on Wigan? Forward well, pass from Edwards there. Well, it's always the same when you play a team like Wigan. They just absorb all the pressure. Then they come out with the firepower. It's been all Oldham. Wigan really have not settled into any sort of pattern at all. They've not been allowed to either. Oldham's defence moving up quickly and forcing them vir virtually into one-man football. Black with the burst, though, gets through Crompton. Oh, and the call inside was from Edwards, and it went straight into Crompton's hands. I I'm wonder whether Crompton gave the call. I'm not so sure that it was Edwards that called for it. Crompton sneaking through. It was good thinking there. He put himself between the big forward and Sean Edwards. Crompton, the dummy half, of course, he will have a big point to prove. But look at that crunching tackle there on Sherratt. It was Kelvin Skerritt who's now back in the defensive line and here he comes honing in on Lindner who gets the ball away to Goodway. He finds Irwin and Ir I think Goodway then was certainly tackled without the ball by Betts and he was. Well they're keeping the ball alive aren't they? Goodway there you can see Betts dragging the man to the ground before in receiving possession. Well the mistakes are plenty from Wigan. Down the hill go Oldham into the Wigan quarter. They restart here with Clark. This now is Gibson with the run. Clark again, the dummy half to Crompton. He gets the ball away. McDermott was the runner, the prop forward. Well, if they don't make any progress on this six, surely they'll go for the one point at least. Crompton again. That's a good ball to Tuiti. Quick hands, but perhaps a bit too quick. David Jones picked it up, and then he was tackled by Twigamala. 18 and a half minutes gone, nil-nil, it's been all Oldham. The champions rock back on their heels, they need the two points. Anything less and they will finish second. Bradford will be enjoying every minute of this, so will their supporters. The 8,000 sellout crowd here, spellbound at this tremendous pressure from Oldham. Kuiti takes the tackle from Botica, it was on the last, it's the automatic turnover. Well, it took the gamble to run with it. Well, perhaps it may have been better served to go for that one point, come back and then regain possession. But Wigan out on the rack and nerves are plenty from their coach, John Dorohy. And the ball dropped. Sean Edwards cannot believe it. Dennis Betts cannot believe it. But the referee's whistle sounds. Well, it was interference. We've got away with that. Andy Goodway, big smile on his face. Look of disbelief from Dennis Betts. Something else that should really set the alarm bells jangling in the uh, Wigan camp. Their away form this season, latterly not been so clever. But look at that, great play from Edwards. But he has conceded the penalty for chatting back. David Atkin having none of this. Well, he did well, did Sean Edwards to steal the ball away from his opposite, Martin Crompton, when the ball came out, Oldham's way from the scrum. And Edwards had a few words to say, and the referee didn't like it. You see how Crompton pulled him away there, and I think after that, he got up and said a few words to the referee, David Atkin, and Atkin said, you're not in charge, I am. No good shaking the head, this could be a vital mistake. Bottica has missed with an early penalty for Wigan. Will Darren Abram now miss with this penalty for Oldham? Abram, just 10 goals this season. 
This is a vital kick. He's got it. Oldham has the lead. 2-0 here at the water sheddings. Stone's been a championship decider. Just turned the screw a little bit tighter. Two vital points. Darren Abram. What a start from Oldham. We said before the game that that would be the key to any success that the Ruffy Eds would get. Wigan have lost four of their last five away matches. This is an uncompromising place, the water sheddings, to come to win the championship. But that's the task that Wigan have. But Clark has stepped out of that challenge. He won't get away from Vex though. Grounds him on halfway. Clark wants to get on with it quickly. Nigel Heslop. Well, they've been rattled, Wigan. This defence is coming out in bits and drabs. That was a forward pass from Compton, though, to McDermott. He keeps the ball alive well. This is Lydiard. Lydiard finds Compton. Compton runs straight over the top of Connolly. Edwards was there. He's hauled out of the way by Lindner, who wants to get on with this. Lydiard again. Ball to Kuwiti, but it was great defence from Bell. Kuwiti saw Bell out the corner of his eye. Wigan skipper read that well there. You can see that Kuwiti tried to pull away at the last moment. Knew it was going to be crunch time. Didn't want anything of it. The big Kiwi centre, Bell saves the day. Dean Bell, 32 on Friday. And in possession now for Wigan. Skipper for the third time against his former club Leeds at Wembley on Saturday. And of course, he has won the championship here many times. Will it be tonight though? Heslop dabs the ball forward. Oh, he just couldn't get a second touch on it. So they, close, they, Nigel Heslop. They took the gamble when really they should have gone for it. He should have dropped on this ball. Possession would have been vital. Six more tackles. He's touched it and we can get head and feet. He took the option to go for the four points when really it would have been better served to have just dropped on to that football. Bob Lindner, Oldham's coach and captain chatting to the referee. It's Oldham's feed at the scrum. Well, I don't know how they got away with that. Must have played the original knock on, but how on earth? David well, Jones is brought down. 24 minutes gone. Jones taking that play, the ball to himself. Platt's just trying to slow him down. Gibson's the dummy half. Here's Ian Sherratt. Can Oldham keep up this pressure? That's the big question. Here's McDermott. The forwards are winning the battle at the moment for Oldham. Good strong run there from the prop forward. He's working hard. Lydiard. Offers it to Irwin. Last tackle here for Oldham. Will they go for the one point? Kuwiti to Crompton. Little dab over the top looking for Heslop. Now who got the touch to that? Nobody did. Just a little bit too strong, but anything can happen. The ball could have bounced back. But nice thinking from Martin Crompton. They really are running the show. This is where the experience and the strength of Wigan has to show through their scrambling defense has held out just that penalty that they've given away huge advantage in terms of possession to Oldham though and remember Oldham playing down the slope here at water sheddings Wigan in possession again with Bell that slope must seem like Mount Everest to Wigan at the moment Hall, Edwards, Botica, Betts Almost through the gap, he is through the gap. The fire is free! The ball was slightly behind the fire, and it just gave Heslop the chance. But he gets the ball away to Ed Edwards, and Gibson's the man who brings Edwards down. Well, a great break there from the second row of Betts. But he had John Mather on the inside. It's a great kick from Betts. Bell is there, he just dropped it. And Goodway's the man who picks it up for Oldham, and sends Gibson away. Gibson dancing towards the quarter line. Clark who brings him down. What a super match this is turning into. And what a great run from the fullback Wally Gibson. He took it well. 
evaded three would-be tacklers, got to the quarter line. Bell nearly got to it, fingertips control. Then the pass from Goodway set the fullback racing upfield. Clark, Crompton, and here now the big prop forward Sherratt. Crompton again. Clips that ball over the top. Connolly will have to pick it up. Oldham must give him 10 metres grace. But not that man because he was the man who put the kick in. Crompton, as he closed in, he put all the Oldham players then onside. Oh, it's wonderful defence. Oldham are moving. They are in top gear. They are forcing Wigan into virtually one-out stuff. Platt with that drive, Wigan lining up behind him, they're starting to plod a little. Oh, he just avoided a real big shoulder charge then, it's Kerrin. They've got in him, him in the sights. Well, in tight situations like this, you need players like Connolly who makes the break. He has two men outside him, one of them's Mather. Mather heading to the corner, tackled by Gibson, a fire! Two-man overlap was crucial. A fire just managed to hang on. And Wigan have a vital try and a vital four points. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, they come back with a big bite. And the fullback Gary Connolly, who's in superb form, links into the three-quarter line, but they made a heavy work of this. It was not the best pass, fingertip control from a fire. Ball out wide, you'll see the dummy runner, Edwards uses it. It was bets they used, the foil was enough for Connolly to strike through. But didn't they make him? Oh really, <laughs> it wasn't the best pass to Mother. Neither was it onto a fire, but he had the skill and the speed. 29 tries this season. Seven tries in five before this for Martin of Fire. That's eight in six. Botica then missed with his first. How will he deal with this one? From tight to the touchline, 20 meters out. If anyone can kick these, it's Frano Botica. But not tonight. Hits the post, but it was underneath the crossbar anyway. 4-2, Wigan just have the advantage. You can see how Edwards uses Betts, the dummy runner, and that leaves the gap for Connolly to link through. That's all it is. It's all about thinking in this game. The dummy runner left the gap, and 3-1. to one. Hard work, but they made it. Fingertip control from a fire. Crunch tackled by Wally Gibson on Barry John Mather. It just wasn't enough. Oldham, as they restart with Lydiard, have made a change, Bill. Well, Andy Goodway, once of Wigan and a winner of four championship uh, winner's medals with Wigan, has come off and on has gone Shane Tapia. So Goodway, vastly experienced, is off. Shane Tapia is on. It's Kelvin Skerritt. Wigan have absorbed all that pressure and they have snapped back with the try. That just shows you the character, the scrambling defence. They really were on the rug. And perhaps Oldham may be ruined the fact now that they didn't elect to go for the one-pointers. All that possession, all that great positioning right under the post of Wigan and yet they came away with just the two points. Edwards' diagonal kick, but it was down the throat of Gibson. Gibson is dancing away from these challenges. Potica didn't hold him, Clark has. And the news of Andy Goodway is that he is in the blood bin. So they have a quarter of an hour to patch up the second rower. And that is a mistake. Possession surrendered by Nigel Heslop. And we're gonna have it back. Botica, Platt. First tackle from Shane Tapia. Martin Hall is in there at dummy half. Edwards, Clark. Just held on too long. Lindner's getting through a lot of work. Paul Botica. 
the runner was Bell, that time it stuck. McDermott with the shoulder charge and Kuwiti coming in to finish off his fellow countrymen. Skerritt called for that ball first receiver, the elbow was up again. It's play on this time, Hall, long ball bets. Good tackling, it's behind Botica. Botica keeps it alive brilliantly to Edwards, who finds a fire, who finds Mather, then in again, bring it in, Mather with the try. They kept that ball alive brilliantly. And Barry John Mather, his 20th try of the season. How priceless those four points might be. Keeping the ball alive is the key, but a good run from the hooker, Martin Hall, set it all up. You can see it split the defence. They came out to get to him. The big second row of bets, he wasn't the best pass, but the man who's always seemed to be around at the right moment, Sean Edwards, there was no way through for a fire, but look how he grabbed that. He may not be a father, this young fella, but he's certainly a daddy long legs to me. Strode out for him to the corner. Edwards, the man who just seems to pop up at the right time. No way through. A big gamble, not the best pass. The second time that this big fella's had to drink, bring in one of those. Great stuff from Mather. Has Botica got the sights in this time when it was closer? But that's three straight misses from Botica, but two tries in four minutes for Wigan after 27 minutes of almost constant Oldham pressure. You can see how Martin Hall runs to the gap. There's no defence there at all. And that drags them in on the angle. The overlap is there. Once the ball is spilt out, not the best pass, but you can see how they're stretched. There's just no one at home still out wide. But there's two men there. And the big young star of the future, a great player, a great try. And now Botica will run that kickoff back towards the Oldham line. Barry John Mather a try against Oldham in November. He's been out for the last five matches with a shoulder injury. Daddy Longlegs, as Steve O's just christened him. That's a forward pass from Hall. Referee says play on. Here's Skerritt. Well, we said he was going to be tough, and the exchange is there, and that was a bit of an elbow coming down from Ian Sherritt. John Dorohy looking on anxiously, but perhaps not as anxiously as just about five or six minutes ago they're working down this left-hand touchline again Mather gets the ball away to a fire he gets away from Irwin Connolly's there and Connolly gets away from Jones steps to the challenges they, Edwards is there and Edwards with the try directed towards the post by a fire and this is championship stuff from Wigan now Beautiful play from Wigan. There you can see the dummy runner being used by Edwards. The quick ball out wide. It was superb play from Botica and same from the centre, John Mother. A fire did the right thing. You've got to get this big man, Connolly, down. They didn't. He allowed the second effort to go through. And one of the best support players in the world, if not the best, Sean Edwards. Sport in a new beard. But look at the strength of the fullback, Gary Connolly. That was upper body strength that pushed him away. The second effort, the pass back on side. He, oh, oh, look at that. He's always there, isn't he? Super. Sean Edwards will have enjoyed that moment. 17 tries now for the season. Botica North from three. Further infield this time, indeed, almost bang in front. Wigan have weathered the storm and have taken hold of this game by the scruff of the neck. Once again, you see the winger, Heslop, having to come in and take the tackle. That leaves it open out wide. Look, there's just nobody there. Nice pass on the inside. But it was the strength of Connolly that made this try. They really should have had him down. They didn't. Look at Edwards screaming for it. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Four vital points. 
The Glen Liddy Artery starts again, and perhaps significantly, a couple of those tries have come when Andy Goodway has been off the field, and Goodway there, number 12, is back on. He has come back out of the blood bin. Let's catch up with all the details of the other changes from Bill. Yes, Andy Goodway back out of the blood bin, and he's replaced Shane Tapea, and also off is Sean Irwin, who's got a bit of a shoulder injury in the centre, and on has come Charlie McAllister. It's Platt who's in possession for Wigan. Sherrod drops on him as the tackle is completed. Hall to Edwards. Here's Skerritt. Last tackle here for Wigan, still inside their own half. It's with Bottica. It's boot to ball. Bounces into the arms of Gibson. He says to David Jones, you have a run. And Bell is there, but it looked high. The referee said it was the collar. Good way to Gibson. Double substitution then for Oldham. Good way back out of the blood bin. And McAllister on, there he is. 37 minutes gone, Wigan 14-2. They've had a really bright last 10 minutes, Wigan. Noticeably that this man was off the field when they did much of their damage, Andy Goodway. Lindner, his captain coach at dummy half. Crompton dabs it over the top, that's inventive play. And he almost got it back, but it was the hand of Crompton that was there. And it's the knock-on. Good play, they just saw that Sean Edwards was a little bit slow getting back into the sweeping row. Nice little chip over the top. Very class. That man, Martin Crompton. But it's all about taking your chances. Three clean breaks from Wigan. They post them all the time. Well, they've won on their last five visits to watersheddings of Wigan. And haven't lost in first division football since a Des Foy try. Gave Oldham an 8-4 win. 11 years ago and yet people say this isn't one of their best grounds statistics like that tend to disprove that point Farrell on one knee gets it away to Connolly Connolly steps away from Lindner doesn't step away from those two though wants to get on with it Edwards the dummy half and that was Crompton that got a hand to it well, it was Crompton that got a hand to that. Edwards is pointing to the Oldham scrum half. Well, he got the ball away, didn't it? It was Crompton that touched it. Oh, well. And Edwards was also appealing to the touch judge to come on and tell the referee what had gone on. The touch judge stood his ground, and so Oldham have the feed at the scrum. McAllister. Woo! Grass band wallop. Edwards, get out of my way. They love the big fella here, Charlie McAllister. They love this fella too, Bob Lindner. A year to go as a player, the big question in this part of the world is, will he be back as player coach next season? Good way, that's a lovely ball. McDermott gets away from Tawiga Mala. But the Wigan defence comes back in numbers and cuts him down. Super run from the prop forward. Showed all the speed and strength there, McDermott. Kuiti to Lydiard to Crompton. Crompton taking him on on his own. Mather there, Connolly there, Edwards there. So often Oldham have been in this position and they've come away with nothing. Will they come away with something this time? It's with McAllister. Ball out wide, a fire got a touch on that. Oh, and it bounced off Heslop. But the touch just says it was accidental bounce off him. It's going to be Oldham's head and feed. You can see that's class as a knock on anyway. They would have played the first knock on. It's been rightly proven by referee David Atkins. But they really need to get some points now. All this effort, they've come away with just two points. Desperate to score just with seconds remaining of the first half. Yes, we're in stoppage time. Ball now with good way. Oldham for a moment have lost their way. Betts brings him down. Oh, he was tackled then, good way, he just lost his marbles for a moment. Well, you can see the knee definitely hits the ground and so does both elbows. That is an effective tackle and that is a bad mistake. 
a wasted opportunity but how many times can we say that about this Oldham side especially in the first 25 minutes Farrell then with the penalty we're getting in no hurry just at the moment minute of stoppage time played this championship decider for Wigan has reached half time and they have a 14 points to 2 advantage Barry John Mather out to prove his fitness for Wembley has given Wigan a huge chance of picking up title number 5 one of the try scorers Martin Crompton trudges off he knows he's played his part in a highly entertaining first half but Oldham trailing by 2 points to 14 Seize the day 40 minutes ahead of Wigan if they are to be the champions. They lead by 14 points to two. Let's go downstairs to Bill, who's with John Dorohy, I believe. John, after a sticky first 25 minutes, it's all come good for you. Yes, yeah, certainly. You know, we, we knew we would have to tough it out there in the, in the first half and play disciplined football. And it was really just a matter of time, and uh, we've made the most of our opportunities. You certainly did. I think three opportunities, and you've taken them all. Oh, I think there was probably four, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll forgive him for that if the result stays the same at the end of the game. Cheers. Big 40 minutes ahead for Wigan and John Dorohy. The first time ever that three clubs have finished level on points at the top of the table. It was points difference that decided it between Wigan and St Helens last season. It's points difference that will decide it here tonight. The Stones, bit of championship then, has 40 minutes to run. And Oldham now kicking up the slope at the water sheddings have to come from behind if Bradford are to be crown champions and Wigan are to be denied. There's Skerritt, straight into the thick of the action immediately. Dennis Betts. 27 minutes, they had to weather the storm, Wigan. And then they snap back and the touch judges on. There was a high challenge there, which referee David Atkin missed. Good way, certainly got one in there, right into the face of the big prop forward, Andy Platt. Well, that's the second occasion that Goodway, former Wigan player, selling off from the referee David Atkin. And he must be walking a very slim tightrope. Andy Farrell with that uh, penalty, kicks it out of the ground. Here's Skerritt. Oh, there was the shoulder and the elbow going in by Skerritt on McDermott. Andy Platt in quickly to try and calm tempers down. But the referee wants Skerritt. He has pulled him back for this a couple of times in the first half. But a retaliation later as well. They both were aiming at each other. It's been quite a big contest between McDermott and Skerritt. Well, is that plenty to say? The referee, David Atkin, is telling him, the captain, if he uses it again, you're gone. That is the second occasion. And I don't think there'll be another warning. They can start running the water in the bath if he does it again. It would be a very interesting disciplinary committee on Thursday, wouldn't it, prior to Wembley, if Mr. Skerritt was up above, uh, in front of them. Skerritt with the run. Clark. Here's McDermott, and he is getting the treatment. All perfectly legal that time. Oof. Clark went in to McDermott then. And it's McDermott dropped the ball. To knock on. Well, there was all sorts going in there. Elbows. You could see Platt swinging the right arm right in front of the referee. A lot of niggling going on there. John Clark came in and involved. <laughs> Andy Platt stands back with his arms out wide, and he had a big wide smile on his face. Let's get downstairs to Bill Arthur. They don't want to run any more risks with Kelvin Skerritt after that little incident with referee Mr. Atkin. 
Kelvin Skerritt is going to be substituted very shortly and on will come Neil Cowie. So obviously what crossed Steve Oedetti's mind has crossed John Dorohy's mind. They don't want any more trouble, although we've got some now. We have indeed. It was a high challenge on Philip Clark. And David Atkin, the youngest referee on the big league list, has got to keep an eye on this. Otherwise, Steve Owen's going to get out of hand completely. You're right there. The fullback Wally Gibson just swinging in. Phil Clark, head going right back. There is no love lost between him, and I'm afraid the referee acting should start looking towards the coloured cards in his back pocket. Enough talk. Let's have a bit of action. Touch judges are indicating that John Dorahy wants to make the change by taking Kelvin Skerritt off and bringing Neil Cowie on. And Skerritt trudges somewhat disconsolately from the field. And that, Neil Cowie comes on. That's a good move by John Dorahy. When you can bring a man of this calibre onto the field of play, why risk losing a man? by being sent off well he did miss one of Wigan's Challenge Cup finalists the finals 1991 we think it was because of suspension but here is Twigamala who has four around him here's Cowie first touch for him cop that says Andy Goodway it was him leading the tackling Platt again McDermott there with Sherratt Platt took that to himself, there was no way that he should have done, and it's a penalty to Oldham. The prop forward, Ian Sherratt, was deemed to be standing in front while he was the one on the side. In my book, he can't believe it. Andy Platt. So yet another penalty, Skerritt just cooling his heels for the time being on the bench. David Jones disentangles himself, Clark gives it to Andy Goodway. Well, there's been little open football in this second half. It's all been crunch time. And I reckon there's more to come. Here's Kuiti. Hello. It's tremendous defence, though, from Wigan. That was Potica. Here's Sherratt. Bang! What Oldham need is a try here. Gibson. Gibson and Hall are having a go. Well, he just swung straight into him and then finished him off. The touch touch is on. I said there was more to come. Don't leave your seats. Swinging arm. Crunch right into the face of Gibson. And then he went down for a second go. And the colour card has at last been shown. And you see Gibson having one back. This is a fiery encounter. Martin Hall gets 10 minutes into the sin bin so Wigan are reduced to 12 men for 10 minutes well it's we heard Martin John Hall is in the bin we heard John Dory talk about discipline and I'm afraid Wigan has lost it at the moment and it's Oldham who are trying to crash their way to the line make this one man advantage tell and they have I think I was going to say another shepherd, penalty, but they haven't. It's no, Wigan. They used the shepherd. He went round the back of a man. There you see it. The loose forward, Mike Kuiti, that was used to prevent the defence getting to him. Oh, this is tough. Here's Edwards. And this is Farrell. Well, the opening seven and a half minutes of this second half have been pretty torrid. I know one team will be happy to see this Wigan outfit getting crunched like this, and that must be Leeds. That's a lovely play from Botica. Here comes Cowie. Yes, the Leeds team, given almost the complete day off yesterday by Dougie Lawton. But uh, there is nothing better, I suppose, to go to Wembley than with tough matches under your belt, and that's what Wigan have had for this past three or four weeks well they haven't come any tougher than this one there's a lot of low flying traffic 
Here's Kuiti. He's brought down eventually. Crompton, little signal to come this way. And it's McAllister who has it. They've got to keep their cool, even though they're leading 14-2. Wigan really have got to dig deep. Don't lose their temper. Don't panic. That's a converted try from Oldham. Really would set the scene. McDermott there. His head shot back under the challenge from Clark, which was legal. High kick from Lydiard. Jones is after it. Connolly's there, though. And Connolly bravely wheels that ball in. Super, you can see how he moved his legs out towards the advancing players just to shield himself. Doesn't particularly like playing fullback, you know, Gary Connolly. He sees himself more as a centre. But my word, hasn't he filled the breach in this back end of this season? Edwards, Platt, through the challenge. Lovely ball away to Mather. Mather with the speed. Edwards the support. They've soaked up more pressure, and Edwards, yes, maybe that's the one, maybe that's the championship, it's the 18th of the season anyway. This was super play, the call on the blind side by the big prop forward, Platt, and I'm afraid Goodway did not get to him, it was a superb pass on, and once again we see the centre, Barry John Mather, and who else on the inside? Claiming another four points. He sets off to celebrate. Look at the run there. Determination. Went too high, but that pass is superb. Fingertips again. Look how cool Barry John Mather was there. He knows, all the Wigan player knows, that when there's something on, this man is on the inside. A little nod. One, two. Give it to us, Sean. <laughs> John Edwards milking the moment and enjoying the moment. Botica now again from bang in front, only one from four tonight. It's going to be two from five. So, Oldham two, Wigan 20, they've one hand on it now. Look how the big forward brings in three players, leaves the gap, and it's open time. Barry John Mather, the talent, the beautiful pass on the inside, support play supreme. He enjoyed that. Conley with the run. Barry McDermott has been taken off and Shane Tupaya, who came on for a blood bin substitution in the First half comes on from McDermott who has a thigh injury. The ball over the top from Bell. He is mad again. A fire's there. Pop the glasses down. A fire with the try. His second. A fire hits 30 for the season. Give me a high five. Another blind side run. Super play by Dean Bell to the dummy half. And once again, Barry John Mather. He's probably wondering when he's going to get a decent pass. Inside, the speed, the skill, the class. He saw that the opening was there. But this guy is having a belter of a game. Fingertip control again. We've seen plenty of that tonight. And Martin celebrates. Nod, nod, nod. Three nods for a fire, two nods for Sean Edwards. Welcome to Wigan's Championship Party. Rano Bodega, two from five. It's going to be three from six if he kicks this. Three from six it is. Oldham 2, Wigan 26, the title race is over. Bell sees the gap and it is wide. Look at that. Away he goes. No second marker from Oldham. He was on his way back. The flick pass outside.
great support play backing up the man with the football that's what rugby league's all about it is sweet to watch two and two minutes in this second half Farrell will drive the ball forward again for Wigan they have made a change Inga has gone off to be replaced by Sam Panapa it's not bad is it when he can take off Inga the winger and bring on a New Zealand international strength in depth that's what it's all about it looks now like Wigan will go to Wembley with the title secure the main objective achieved Skerritt and Twigamala just watching now from the bench Panapa first touch he has had a great season too great season indeed he's worked hard there has been times when Wigan were somewhat shaky and the man Panapa came on so many times to get them out of a tight situation Gibson was missed by Bell but wasn't missed by Panapa or Philip Clark David Jones well for 27 minutes I rather fancy that Bradford Northern had bags of hope and for the past 27 those hopes have been blown apart Wigan the champions but my word haven't Oldham given them a match but Sherratt drops the ball and then Panapa gets dropped on by Crompton they're looking a little bit tired now Oldham how much it must have taken now to them in that first stanza for 30 minutes where they really stretch Wigan to the limit and this is where Wigan are so classy they really do pull a team apart that doesn't tackle like that stepping from Bottica all the way to the line they are cutting loose they are showing their quality and Bottica with the try that stretches the advantage still further let the party begin the defense a little bit slow to come through the step from Botica. they say this guy is only good for his goal kicking but when you can score tries like that he's got an extra advantage just a simple run and step you can see a very lazy defense there very tired indeed they can't get to him you'll enjoy that nice dive too the tries for Wigan are coming in little bursts. Three in six minutes in the first half. Three in six minutes now in the second half. And Martin Hall is still in the sin bin. Wigan are down to 12 men at the moment. Botica with this conversion attempt then of his own try. Wigan's point scoring machine Wigan's point and goals record holder in a season oh he's found the mark now Potikas four turns magically into six slow defence at the play of the ball you can see three Oldham players too tight the gaps there the step from Bodica and the speed it finishes it off they're a weary bunch now this Oldham outfit it's taken it out of them that first 30 minutes and the champagne surely now will be starting to be popped open I think so the bottles will be in the refrigerator here at the water sheddings mind you it's cold enough in this part of the world not to bother with the fridge but Philip Clark is just leaving the field to be patched up it's a blood bin substitution Phil Clark goes off and so Tuigamala returns and Martin Hall is also out of the sin bin so Wigan now are back to full strength I bet Oldham are comforted by that ball stolen penalty Wigan frustration now the name of the game for this Oldham side you can see Winger Jones just drag the ball away little that they can do they have come up against a wonderful side a championship side so many seasons now the other side had their opportunity when Wigan faltered just before Easter 
Fred Warrington and Bradford failed to put the last nail in Wigan's coffin. They kept alive their chances, and here they are tonight. Supreme, 32-2. It's going back to Central Park again. But what a season we have had in the big league. Three teams level on points at the top. Only points difference separating them. And it's score lines like this that give Wigan such a huge advantage. But John Dorohy, ever the perfectionist, has a little shake of the head because of that little mistake by Martin Afire. Just couldn't keep hold of the ball. It wasn't the best pass. And so it's Oldham's head and feet at the scrum. And now a penalty to Oldham at that scrum. Put up. Glenn Lilliard with the penalty. Oldham coming back up the hill here with Sherratt. There's no one there in support now for Oldham. They are worn out. I think the effort of the opening half hour has taken its toll. Lindner, though, has seen nights like this in the past, particularly back home in Australia. Crompton gets the ball away to Lydiard. He keeps the ball alive to Gibson. Can Oldham get in for the try? They deserve one, but Wigan say they shall not pass, and here goes Connolly. Full credit to Oldham, they kept the ball alive, but that final pass just going to ground. Once again, that scrambling defence from Wigan. Five in a row then, by the looks of things now, we will confirm that for you in exactly 20 minutes. But it is the greatest show of consistency ever in the game, in this country. Only comparison, I suppose, Steve, over the 11 years that St George won the Premiership in Australia from 55 to 66 in your day. <laughs> what a funny feeling you might say that, Eduardo. <laughs> Away, come on. Yeah, that was a great side. The most amazing thing about it is, is that during those 11 years, the crowds used to roll up in thousands to see the skills. Even though it was one-sided on so many uh, occasions. And they will on this occasion. Wigan are a powerful outfit. And when you look through the fact that out of their squad of 15 for tonight, there was only Martin Hall that had not played international at top level. Yes, they have some strength and everyone in the game is trying to emulate them and they are, it must be said, getting closer and closer and closer. Been a heck of a race. Bradford and Warrington, they have their chances. Skerritt is being warmed up to return and I think it's going to be Sean Edwards who's coming off. I rather fancy, Steve-O, as uh, Platt dropped on that loose ball, I rather fancy that John Dorohy will start if he can now. Just resting one or two with next week in mind. Here's Panapa. Well, it's all about sharing the load, isn't it? It's the best thing to do. Betts. He's come back strongly, hasn't he, from his uh, horrific injury. He's had real problems this season. Botica gives it to Connolly. Well, they're waltzing through them now. Scored then with consummate ease. And he's in double figures. Simple rugby league football. Get the ball out wide after you've done the hard work with your forwards. The long ball out wide from with Edwards. He's a master at that. That was a superb pass from Frano Botica. Any youngster watching the game to see how you chime onto the football at full speed, take note of this. Gary Connolly. Notice how he chimes in right at the right moment. Picks up the speed now and bang. No chance to stop him in full flight. So Gary Connolly, 10 tries for Wigan this season. You know, he's got 14 caps for his country and he's never crossed the whitewash yet for Great Britain. But 10 tries now for the Wigan cause. Um, just one try before that in the big league since January. That was against Sheffield in defeat. Try here tonight in victory. And another two from the boot. 
38-2. The party is in full swing. Sean Edwards has been taken off the field to be replaced by Kelvin Skerritt and Bill Arthur is with the Wigan scrum half. Sean, 38-2, looks like the title is in the bag. Well, it certainly does. Uh, just come off myself as a precaution. The hamstrings tightened up a bit, but, you know, today's game was very tough because even though the scoreline didn't suggest it, it wasn't like kind of Warrington's game and um, Bradford's game, which were very easy against winning teams. These guys are no mugs and um, they came out firing early on and we did well to withstand the pressure. But um, a couple of tries for our time, I think, killed them off. Must have, a few worries in those opening minutes because, as you say, they really did come at you. Of course, it was a very uh, intense. We played like a cup tie in the first 25 minutes, and um, I think we did well to withstand the pressure, as I've already stated. But um, it looks like we're champions now, so I'm happy. And you scored uh, a couple of cracking tries as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I could have stayed on and gone for my hat trick, but I think I'll uh, just be safe with the Wembley being next week. Yes, Sean Edwards, a man who walks out for a record ninth. Wembley and if he wins next week against Leeds he will equal Andy Gregory's eight cup winners medals oh that's a bad kick down field by Botica straight into the arms of Shane Tapia and Cowie's leaning all over Tapia there took it well didn't it Tapia surprised him a little bit and this is good way good way to the line gets the ball away consolation it's Darren Abram. Wonderful play by the Australian Bob Linder. Ball out wide. It was a nice pass from Charlie McAllister that set him through. But look at the second effort here. They went too high. Connolly and the fire were just grabbing. Instead of going low, it was a beautiful delayed pass. And the centre Abram in for a consolation try. They deserve that. They've played their part. Beautiful pass there from McAllister. Set the big second rower through that gap. But look at the strength there. John Dory wouldn't be happy with the attempted tackles. Darren Abram then. 20 tries for him this season. In what has been a battle for Oldham until well, only last weekend against relegation. And now he's attempting to turn that four into six. Just misses. Ball slides by the post. Six to 38 then. Nothing changes in terms of celebration. Gap slightly narrower. So those four defeats in the last five away matches well and truly behind them as uh, Ian Sherratt goes off to be replaced by Barry McDermott who comes back and Botica restarts we have just 13 minutes to go to the championship presentation when Wigan will be crowned the kings of the big league. It's been a tough campaign. Warrington and Bradford really did run them right to the end. Opportunities, as you mentioned, Eddie, for both those sides to catch up with Wigan. But the depth and class and quality just came through at the end. You have been able to witness the climax to the Stones Bitter Championship with us here on Sky this weekend. I hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been a wonderful three days and it's not over yet because Panapa is scooting home. Settle back and enjoy the skills that are on show here. The pinnacle of the big league. Well, if John Dory needed a reminder, that Sam Panapa is a super sub. This is it. It was a beautiful set move. They were working the crisscross and he just threw the dummy. A little bit like touch football now, I'm afraid. Not many 
crunch tackles. Here's the crisscross. Botica through the dummy. Depaya took it. And this guy has the speed. Really has come on this season. It's been a wonderful year. Hannafers try. Try number 19 of this season produces Wigan's best victory at Watersheddings since the war. Records start to tumble to this team of all talents. And it's Botica from Bang in front. safe and Sam with the kicking confirmation it is the best performance by Wigan on this ground since World War II 44 points to 6 there you see the crisscross Botica bringing back Panapa I'm afraid Tapia took the huge dummy but it still had to be scored they went high again this guy has the upper body strength also the handoff was enough to get through the gap Tell you what, steve we have seen some points scored on the big league this weekend, haven't we? Big yeah. scoring match Friday, big scoring match yesterday, and another 50 here tonight. Well, at 44-6, it really doesn't reflect the effort that Oldham has put in. There's been some sensational play from Wigan that's got them to that position. Late in the game, Oldham got very tired. Still no smile from Dory. Looks as though he's uh, lost a pound and found a shilling, doesn't he, John Dory? He's just won the championship. But of course, as well as the championship, as well as Wembley, the Premiership now comes into play. And Wigan, top of the ta table. And it's going to be Wigan St. Helens in the first round the week after Wembley. Remember, follow the Premiership all the way to Old Trafford with us here on Sky. Three weekends after Wembley. And of course, Wigan Saints, a repeat of last year's final, which St. Helens won. Well, a bit scrappy play there. They'll deem it a knock-on from Skerritt. David Jones, the winger, trying to get it away. And you'll see Skerritt there, just a fingertip. That's all it needs. Now, can Oldham finish with a flourish? At least it will please the ardent fans that turned up today. Full house. They've witnessed a fine team, a fine game. Some classic tries have been scored. There have been, haven't there? Some sensational tries scored, and in quick succession, too, by Wigan. And the abiding memory will be that contest that this match was for the opening 27 minutes or so. Wigan soaked it all up like a sponge. Oldham really did take the battle to the champions. And then Wigan just pressed the accelerator and off they went. It was an interesting five minutes after the restart also, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, wasn't it just? That kept the crowd alive. A few of the players also. Ball pops up into the arms of Farrell. Bell is there. Bell just hanging on to it. Twigamala in support. Scored a try midweek against Castleford. And dear me, he takes some bringing down. Bell to Cowie. Swinging out there from Abram. Hall, the runner, is Skerritt, Kelvin Skerritt, hauled back by three. Panapa, the dummy half, spins it out to Bottica, further wide to Connolly, quick hands to a fire, a fire round Lippiard, he dropped it, that's no try. Stretching for the line, no good effort wasn't it just lost it inches short I thought there was no chance he could get round but it was a fine effort he really is 
in fine form bounce back at the right moment some super tries he scored over the last couple of games I'm sure everyone will be excited to see his speed at Wembley next weekend yeah, he's looking to score the hat-trick there wasn't he yeah, yeah. McDermott and was the ball stolen yes Andy Farrell says no not me David Atkins says yes most certainly it was <laughs> well, McDermott trying to get the ball away there virtually passed it to Farrell big smile he's worked hard hasn't he Barry McDermott impressed me so has that fella Andrew Farrell still just a youngster what a great season he's also had all international honours they just keep coming don't they it's Wigan camp Steve, the fact of the matter is that the big league has caught up with Wigan they must have done it's the first time that we've had three clubs on the same number of points at the top of the table only points difference separating them again but just how good is this Wigan team would you say compared to the ones of say the last four years are they as good are they as slick they're certainly as efficient aren't they just count the silverware that'll probably tell you there's only one so far you can't really sort of set them to different teams different times if you're the champions you're the champions you're the best sounds like the cue for a song but Panapa got Crompton high but the referee says play on Connolly he saw there was no one at home here goes a fire against Gibson Gibson loses out a fire picks up and then he is tackled brilliantly it was David Jones funneling back and a fire knows he's blown a hat-trick there he just relaxed well that could be a penalty try I'm not so sure about this or is it the knock-on he's given the knock-on here's the tackle and penalty, here's the tackle and cromped him it's pretty high the ball came out but when Connolly kicks downfield he is crunched out of the action a fire thought that it was hat-trick time he was even looking to see if there's anyone there he didn't know that David Jones was coming to him either way I don't think a fire took control of that at any time he must have heard Wally Gibson go down on the floor behind him and then I think he did just relax momentarily but credit to Jones for the chase back Super. with a score line like that eh kept running back didn't throw the towel in but it was interesting to see uh, the fullback Gary Connolly after the kick he really did go to the ground just set it off down the hill didn't he for a fire to gallop after and now Oldham are trapped in their own 20 metre zone McDermott takes the tackle McAllister with the run that's good stuff from McAllister they have kept it going Oldham right to the end you must give them some credit for that Crompton soccer skills that bounced off Connolly it's play on Abram who scored before Twigamala's after it Twigamala gets it does he he most certainly does David Atkins said the ball went backwards off the big Kiwi he did the right thing there didn't he see how he put his body between the player and the football so that if he did lose it at any point it would go backwards good skills there by the big winger by eager Twigamala Connolly is injured and there is the Stones Bitter Championship Trophy and Wigan will receive that in just over two minutes time Connolly is injured and will take some treatment from David Fever the Wigan physio this is how the injury came about once again another good tackle from David Jones just twisted in that tackle there see the pain on Gary Connolly's face anxious moments I must say that that uh, championship trophy looks in pretty good order considering it has been in the boot of one of our <laughs> crew's car over the past three days <laughs> we have trailed it round the northwest of England and the northeast of England up and down the M62 it's ended up here at Oldham it will go home to Wigan tonight
Well, he'll be polishing it for over four hours. He'll be a little bit disappointed he has to give it up tonight. I think. <laughs> By the way, there was no chance of it being stolen over the weekend. There was a Rottweiler in the car with it. Just a little knock on there from Sam Panapa. I didn't think he slept in the car. Did <laughs> He's, well, I was going to say he's just whispered in my ear and said it was the wife, but I better not say that. <laughs> well, the final seconds now. They're going through the motions. The adrenaline will be pumping through this Wigan side. Even though they've been there, done that so many times, they'll be happy to lift the silverware yet again. Here's Clark. Well, it's been a wonderful season, this, hasn't it, on the big league? I hope you have enjoyed it on Sky. And I think, Steve, we should pay tribute to our cameramen and crew of the uh, Sky Sports team. They bring you this action week in, week out, throughout the winter in the most awful conditions. But it's been an absolutely fabulous season. Oldham have had the penalty here. And a good way was dropped without the ball. Little kick through there. <laughs> And you can see that Platt, and that's good work by Gibson, he's lost it. He can't believe it, the fullback, Molly Gibson. Quick tap, he was on his way over the line, and at the vital moment, he lost possession. Well, that's a shame for the Oldham fullback, he's played well. Tough little character. Into stoppage time. Full marks Oldham, but that trophy is on its way back to Central Park for another season. Five in a row for Wigan. John Dorohy, his first season in charge, and he has got the first silverware. Lost the Regal Trophy, is at Wembley next week, Premiership to come, but Dorohy has wheeled in the big one this season, the Stones Bitter Championship. That's the one they all want. That's the one they set their mark by, the champion team. It's Wigan again. And for once, Barry John Mather couldn't drag in a very difficult ball. He tried all the way to the ground there. Doesn't receive many good passes. A minute of stoppage time played. Tupaya has hold of it for Oldham. Crompton. Not the best pass. And that was Botica who got to it first with the boot. Jones is tracking another man back. Botica, though, will not be denied. And Wigan are about to hit the 50-point mark on this, the last night of the championship campaign. Botica's second try. This time, David Jones just didn't have the legs. Not the best pass there. Play on, Botica did the right thing. Good control. The man who's become famous throughout the rugby league world for his goal kicking really did pop up nicely for him. What a way to finish. Look at the reaction on the coach, John Dory. The 50 points, you little beauty, the Australian well and truly happy, and rightly so. He's been under pressure all season. You can't do any better than become the champions of this country. John Dorohy makes his way down from the uh, front row of the main stand to get a close-up view of the championship presentation. Frano Botica, if he kicks this, his seventh goal of the night, will have registered 22 points here at the water sheddings and 22 it is 50 points to six the full-time siren it is all over and Wigan are the champions again taken all the way to the wire by Bradford by Warrington we mustn't forget the wonderful effort of those two clubs but it's John Dorohy's night it's Wigan's night. They are the champions. Not a bad start to the big league career 
of Inga the winger. 22 points tonight for Frano Botica. My word how they will miss his contribution if he moved elsewhere. And how they will miss him if they don't sign him. By the end of the season, he runs out of contract. The end of this campaign. Martin Afire and Martin Compton sharing a little joke. All smiles on the Wigan faces. They're great mates off the field too. Botica and Tuigamala. Well, it was a tough encounter, but it's great to see both sides shaking hands. Well wishes. And rightly so. Wigan have shown tonight their supremacy. Let's go downstairs, Bills with Andy Platt. Andy, in the end, a convincing victory, but they certainly made you work for this title. Yes, I think the form in the Oldham's form in the last few weeks have been very good and uh, the first 20 minutes, you know, we were lucky just we just had to hang on there and, you know, hope that we could weather the storm and then come through, you know, in the end, but we did. Did some doubts creep into your mind as they came tearing at you? Uh, we expected it, you know, we always thought, we always we looked at the fixtures and obviously they all, were all going to be hard, but we were sort of like, Ian Mark, this one has been the most difficult one. It was a plus for us when they got the, 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 uh, the, 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 the relegation issue was solved last week. So we thought I might just have a bit of edge off them, but they certainly came out fair in the first 20 minutes. Now, you've experienced some success with Wigan, given the fact that this went right down to the wire. How does this title rank? Oh, it ranks along with all the rest of them, you know. When you start off at the beginning of the season in August and, and September, it seems a long way off, and you know, you've got to do your hard work then, keep your head down, and uh, every year has been uh, uh, satisfying, and, and, and this not, 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 so, not, not so much so. And for somebody who's leaving the club very shortly, it must be even sweeter. It is because I think, you know, I wanted to leave on a high note. I've had such six great years at Wigan, and it meant a lot for me to, to leave the fans and leave the, the, the team of Wigan on a high note. Thanks, Andy. Congratulations. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, congratulations to Andy Platt and all the Wigan team who will receive the trophy right now. It's familiar territory for Dean Bell. Just getting the championship trophy in the right place for the right time a great moment this for John Dorothy under pressure following on from the living legend of John Money but he's got one under his belt now and I'm sure he will be as relieved as anybody Inga the winger now talks with Bill Inga, to be involved in this must exceed the expectations you had when you joined Wigan. Yeah, obviously it's a great honour and uh, I thank the guys and the coach for the opportunity to uh, have faith in me to play. Um, I came at, uh, at the business end, hello Gary, I came, came at the business end of uh, the season and I've had to fight my way back uh, into the team and it's been great. Guys like Sam Panapa and Frano and the rest of the bunch has uh, made it uh, good for me. What's it like being involved in an occasion like this? Well, obviously it's the pinnacle of... Uh, British club rugby is to win the premiership and we've done it and done it well too. Yeah, they have done it well. Joint captains this season, Edwards and Bell, lift the trophy and take the applause of this full house at the watershed. Look out for those pictures in the newspapers tomorrow. Sean Edwards. 100% committed professional John, John, yes, John. that's the one they wanted next week will be the bonus if they win the double but the 1994 champions the Stones bit of champions again Wigan believe me it's a very weighty piece of silverware but what that would mean to a fellow of the size of Andy Farrell very little Martin Hall has played his full part in this championship season too he deserves his medal and it's not a bad start is it for Inga the winger as he said just a few moments ago the most delighted man in the Wigan camp I'm sure is the Wigan coach John Dorohy John, uh, after all the trials and tribulations of the season how does this taste? Absolutely brilliant, you know, it's, um, it's been more than worthwhile to go through everything I have done 
and uh, to see these guys finish in style was exactly the way that I would have expected them to do. But early doors here, there must have been one or two nerves. Well, it was always going to be tough coming up here. You know, the soothsayers were out, and um, we always knew that Oldham would throw everything out as part of the kitchen sink. They did too, but you know, Wigan's Wigan, and we've really worked hard for this season, uh, for this last game, and, and to cap it right off. Uh, points difference, but we're still winners. When you win it in style like this, it, it makes one wonder why there was ever any doubt, why you had the problems you did have. Uh, exactly, and uh, I just like to say to all those doubters out there, suck. So it, you think you've really proved people wrong? I would think so, definitely. And the job's not over yet. Uh, not, not by a long shot. We've still got next week to do. We'll enjoy tonight. Uh, the guys will have fun, and uh, we'll start work tomorrow. Cheers, Bill. Yeah, back to the office for these boys tomorrow. They will enjoy the night. But the countdown to Wembley begins tomorrow morning. And the countdown to the Premiership begins next Sunday morning. Business as usual at Central Park. Well, they talk about the pressure of the players. But there's no man being under more pressure than John Dorohy. They said John Money. It would be hard to follow in the footsteps of Graham Lowe. He did it, and congratulations to John Dorohy. It's been a rocky road for him this season, but he's proven that he has got the quality, and that is the reason why. The silverware gleaming, the players enjoying this moment. Been there, done that, but who cares? That is a magnificent team. Magnificent is exactly the right word. A great effort. Well done to Wigan. Hard luck Bradford. Hard luck Warrington. So close, yet so far. Wigan are the champions for 1994. And they will enjoy this moment for 12 hours at least.